dried up so I think today's a good opportunity to get them moist back to their normal position. Well, you know, we'll tune in a little bit later to show you guys some more of the great ocean there's that a, we guys there's, enjoy. There's a storm out there. Uh, yeah, it, it's not actually us, but... It, a storm is a coming! There's a storm right there. See? But we're back for more uh, storms. Today we celebrate our anniversary at our favorite place, the ocean, on our boat. When we celebrated our first year married, I recall looking forward to accumulating years of anniversaries together. Here we are at six years and we're overjoyed. meeting each other we enjoyed our single season but we yearned for our long lost companion to enjoy this life together in that season we both acknowledged times we can admit we were living to die rather than dying to live while this statement sounds dramatic there were segments of our lives where some of our choices were unwise and dishonorable Perhaps the yearning became unbearable. Perhaps our defeats were overbearing. Considering those less than admirable experiences, I'll reflect on the characteristics which embody this concept. Ultimately, Living to die derives from pain, hardship, and distrust outcomes will be better. A person discusses or considers their pain and hardship overwhelming. This overwhelming pain, hardship, and distrust reacts from one, shock and denial, two, pain and guilt, three, anger and bargaining, four, depression, reflection, loneliness. Although they're discussing their pain and hardship, the person's reaction doesn't want opinions critically correcting their dysfunction, which causes their pain and hardship. The person portrays themselves as a victim of circumstances. The person's choices and judgment are unwise, inconsiderate, reckless, demonstrate a pattern of poor judgment, impulsive, guided by emotions only, engage in immoral practices. They secretly have a deep belief they're unworthy of the true definition of love. They're miseducated about the equation of the true definition of love and or unwilling to uphold health.
complacent to dysfunctional thoughts and actions and stop trying. They feel and believe their trauma is all life will amount to and all they deserve. Their choices are made based on circumstances versus obedience, faith, education, talent, perseverance, all in the name of the true definition of love. Feeling misunderstood and like no one can understand their pain, therefore their loneliness, victimization, discomfort permits them to remain in an endless grief and wallow. They can feel helpless and hopeless. Wallowing becomes a natural part of their lifestyle. Their thoughts are occupied by their grief and their actions are demonstrations of their grief. Their decisions are guided by their grief. Their contacts and surroundings begin to have little significance. Without meaning or a sense of purpose, the person's feelings showing or involving a hopeless sense that a situation is so bad as to be impossible to deal with. Then, choices or decisions become desperate attempts at getting by. People adapt to circumstances and limitations. However, some limitations are no longer severe and become an illusional barrier. Adapting to circumstances and evolving from circumstances are different concepts. The differences are about Valuing self and humanity according to love and deserving the true definition of love. Adapting is to adjust to new conditions. To evolve is to progress, transform from a simple to a complex form, advance or develop toward a better, more complete and more modern state. The goal is to transform from living to die to dying to live. Take the time to seize the moment. Appreciate. Time is life and no one should waste it. Grief is where there's any loss which matter to someone. In grief, there are stages of turmoil and they dissipate over time. Happy <laughs> 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 He's a little bit 
this shoe. <laughs> My back is going to be messed up with all this falling for fun. Got me a big old fish right here. In the latter end of grief, one graduates into motivation, determination, acceptance, and hope. No doubt about it, grief is overbearing, and I pray for those battling grief to safely and peacefully graduate to the latter stages so they are able to live and live life abundantly.